Welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, we are going to look how to calculate seismic load based upon Algerian standard. In the right hand side, you can see RPA 99 version 2003, which is a code to be used to calculate seismic load for Algerian. Generally, this code should be in French due to Algerian's colony history. French, even though it is not an official language, the French language should be used in many of the education and technical document. So thus we are having the code which, uh, which is in French language. In the left hand side you can see an Excel calculation which is developed to demonstrate the seismic load sta as per Algerian standard. First of all this calculation is uh, mainly applicable for a static method. There are two methods. One is a static method, another is a dynamic method. A dy dynamic method required software and other tools. But we can go with the Excel calculation for static method. So that's why static method is uh, selected here. So first we will see the conditions for a static method. This conditions for static method is available in class 4.1.2 of RPA 99 so for that we need to refer page number 38 so even though it is in French notation in this class let me explain in English so there are two class uh, subclasses I can say for 4.1.2 in A this is mentioned for regular buildings in plan and the elevation so that uh, what is a regular that is well explained in chapter 3 parara 3.5 regular building plan and the elevation those which are having height less than 65 meter falls under seismic zone 1 and 2 alternatively if it is the structure height is less than or equal to 30 meter in seismic zone 3 these all regular buildings are applicable and comes under static method of seismic analysis for irregular building which is mentioned in B irregular in plan and elevation where if it is comes in zone one means for all groups of uh, building or construction group is applicable for this uh, static method so I will explain afterwards uh, what is this group means next one is a seismic zone 2 for group 3 it is applicable for group 2 building those which are having up to 7 storey or up to 23 meter again in group 1b up to 5 storey and up to 17 meter group 1a up to 3 storey or up to 10 meter for seismic zone 3 either group 3 or 2 up to 5 storey and 17 meter group 1b 3 storey and 10 meter group 1a 2 storey and up to 8 meter so these are the criteria to go for static method so we are considering regular with zone 2a and group 1a structure height which we are assuming here as 10 meter so then we can say we can go for static method seismic zone generally this seismic zone to be provided by the customer or uh, owner of the project or else we can get from this RPA map so for that page number 26 to be referred. So you can see in the right hand side the seismic map which is provided in the seismic code RPA 99. So in the uh, left hand side you can see the uh, indication of uh, the color indication which is state this is seismic zone 3, 2B, 2A, 1 and 0. 
So I am considering for our calculation purpose the project location as Eindhoven, whereas our seismic zone is 1B, which is already selected. And the definition for the seismicity are provided in Class 3.1 of RPA 99. Page number 25 to be referred for this. Yes, here in the left hand side you can see the French, and the, in the right hand side you can see the English version of the same. Seismic zone zero means it is a neglected seismicity. Seismic zone one means low seismicity. Two A and two B are moderate seismicity. Three is for high seismicity. And the next input we required is. Construction group. So let me explain the construction group uh, as per class uh, 3.2 of RPA. So the construction group is just mentioned below in the right hand side. Group 1A. So there is a translation version you can see in uh, left hand side, a word file. So group 1A means it is a construction of vital importance, which is uh, mainly stating that even after the major earthquake. For the needs of the survival of the region should be existed, the public safety and the national defences. So that means the building, housing strategy, decision making centres such as parliament or any important government oriented building, which is required to be a, a taken a, a decision taking centres. We need to consider as group one A. So similar like building, housing staff and equipment for rescue and or other national defence. operational roles such as civil defense centers police or military barracks parking lots for emergency and rescue equipment and vehicles public health department buildings such as hospital and centers equipped with emergency social and obstetric services public communication department buildings such as telecommunication broadcasting radio and television radio relays airports and air traffic drinking water production and storage facilities are vital important historical and cultural public buildings national importance energy production and distribution facilities of national importance administrative buildings operational buildings so these all are comes under group 1a so similarly next uh, group 1b is a construction of high importance so for that construction of housing frequently large uh, group of persons especially Office and other buildings which are having more than 300 people, such as large mosque, office buildings, commercial and industrial buildings, schools, universities, sports and cultural buildings, jails, great hotels, buildings for collective housing exceeding 48 meter height, public buildings of national importance uh, for or having a great social, cultural and economic importance. Library, depository buildings of regional importance, museum, etc. Health department uh, buildings other than Group One A, energy production and distribution facilities other than Group One A, water towers and water tanks with high to moderate importance. So these all comes under Group One B. Next is uh, Group Two, construction construction of uh, moderate importance. So construction of non-classified in the other groups so 1A, 1B, or 3, such as buildings for collective housing uh, or office services which are not exceeding 48 meter, other buildings occupied by less than 300 persons, buildings and industrial buildings, public park lots. So these are all comes under group two. For Group Three, construction of low importance. These are generally temporary constructions, such as garbage, gudon, or storage gudon, which where there is no living beings or exist, and industrial or agricultural buildings sheltering low value goods, buildings with limited risk for people. So these are comes under Group Three. So now I am selecting here Group One here. That is construction of. Vital importance for our uh, demonstration purpose. 
Next one is uh, site soil category. Generally, this uh, soil investigation, geotechnical investigation, shall be uh, done in many of the projects. So this is uh, site soil category information we can get from the soil report. The classification, if you see, that should be as per class uh, 3.3.1 of RPA. So in the right hand side, you can see the French version as per the code. In the left hand side, you can see English version. So category S1 means it is a rocky site. The explanation provided here is rock or other geological formation characteristic uh, by an average shear wave velocity Vs uh, greater than or equal to 800 meters second. S2 is a firm soil site, very dense gravel site and S3 is a soft soil, the definition is provided here and S4 is a very soft soil, loose sands deposit, the definitions are provided here. So these are uh, the four category of uh, soil. For our demonstration purpose, I am considering category S2, that is firm soil site. Next, we need to find out acceleration coefficient for seismic zone based upon our seismic zone uh, 2B and uh, group, construction group 1A. So for that, we need to refer table 4.1 of RPA. Page number 40 to be referred. Uh, sorry, it is page number 40. So here in the right hand side, you can see table 4.1, which are stating the seismic zone value, that uh, acceleration coefficient value uh, in uh, respect to seismic zone and the group of uh, construction group. So the left hand side, what I did is I had made a table. So and applying the values uh, which are mentioned in the table 4.1 here and those uh, zone factor uh, as per the category uh, and the construction category and all those things that value I had extracted from this uh, table and finally by selecting this uh, drop down list two drop down list uh, like uh, seismic zone and construction group the value of acceleration coefficient can be extracted from the table which are uh, showing here so thus I am getting the acceleration coefficient A as 0 0.3. Next one is uh, structure system. So this is in line with the table 4.3. So for that we need to refer page number 42. In the right hand side you can see table 4.3. Whereas there are uh, various uh, systems of structures uh, are mentioned here in finish and in the left hand side you can see a word file where it is mentioned that uh, uh, reinforcement concrete in A under that various uh, category 1A states moment resistant frames without uh, stiff masonry infill so likewise uh, for steel also various category and masonry other systems also uh, some few categories so accordingly there are also values of behavioral factor, uh, structural uh, global figure, behavioral factor also mentioned in the right hand side R value, 5, 3.5 respective to the system, uh, structure system. So here you can see that global behavior coefficient of the structure R, which are depends upon the structure system in line with the table four. So here, there are various uh, structure system are uh, listed out here. So based upon that, we are selecting steel, ordinary moment resistant frames. So in the table, the moment steel, ordinary moment uh, resistant frame is considered as a four. So this value is uh, extracted here. And the next value of coefficient CT. This CT is required to find out uh, fundamental period. So for that we need to refer table 4.6. 4.6 as per RPA 19.9. 
45 to be referred page number so here you can see the table 4.6 which is having four types of uh, structural system reinforcement concrete movement resistant uh, frames without uh, infilled masonry is having ct value of 0 0.075 Steel moment resisting frames without infilled masonry is having 0 0.085 and steel or reinforcement concrete moment resistant frame with infilled masonry and partially or totally reinforcement concrete is here walls braced frames and masonry walls are having 0 0.05 respectively. So for our steel ordinary moment resistant frames which we have selected here it is 0 0.085 from the table so that are captured in uh, column number six of this excel backup so the same value is extracted from this table next one is uh, total height of the structure which here we are going to assume here as 10 meter so because we are not having any physical model now so we need to find out the fundamental period based upon the class 4.2.4 note 2 which is showing in the right hand side T equal to that is fundamental period equal to CT into HN power 3 by 4. So applying this H value and the CT value which we had uh, find out into this uh, formula I am getting fundamental period T as 0 0.48 second. Next input we next thing we need to calculate is uh, characteristic period. So, so this is as per uh, table 4.7 of RPA. 99 2003 for that we need to refer page number 48 so here the table 4.7 is showing in the right hand side so based upon the site condition s1 s2 or s3 or s4 the t1 t2 is time fundamental the characteristic period T1, T2 are mentioned here in the table. So for our uh, soil type uh, category S2, our value T, T2 value is 0 0.4, so which are extracted from the table here. So 0 0.4 is our uh, S2, so, uh, is our characteristic period for S2. Then we need to calculate or we need to find out critical damping ratio. This is as per uh, 4.2 of RPA 99. For that we need to refer page number 40. So here we can see table 4.2 whereas the uh, percentage of uh, damping, uh, critical damping is provided here. 5% uh, is for metal frames with heavy infill. 6 is uh, light reinforcement concrete. 4 is for metal with light infill and uh, 7 is a heavy infill with uh, uh, reinforcement concrete and for shear walls or walls reinforcement concrete machinery it is a 10 percent so for us it is a steel ordinary movement resistant frames for that it is a 5 sorry it is a 4 percent of uh, damping we had assumed here sorry it is not assumption value it is as per the table and uh, next one is a damping Correction factor. This is as per equation 4.3. Neta equal to square root of 7 divided by 2 plus damping coefficient epsilon, which should be greater than or equal to 0 0.7. By applying this equation, I am getting neta value as 1.08. Next one is average dynamic amplification factor this is as per equation 4.2 
which is provided in the right hand side algerian code so there are three criteria is provided here in case of uh, fundamental period t if it is greater than 0 and less than t2 t2 is a characteristic period then d equal to 2.5 into neta neta is a damping correction factor so similar way if our uh, fundamental period is greater than or equal to uh, d2 and less than or equal to 3 second then we have to use 2.5 neta into t2 divided by t power 2 by 3 s d value so similar like if it is t is greater than or equal to 3 second so this is the formula to be used in our case is a second one whereas our t2 is less than t but the t is less than 3 second so by applying this if condition and all this formula and using this value I am getting average dynamic amplification factor D as 2.39 next we need to find out is quality assurance so this quality assurance and penalty factor for category we need to refer table 4.4 so for that we need to refer generally this quality factor mainly depends upon the redundancy of the structure or the geometry of the constituent of the element if the element is isotrophy or the prismatic then the quality is very good likewise regularity in plan and elevation of the structure the quality of the control of construction if these are fulfilled then the quality factor will be coming very less then it means the quality is a better then the seismic value will be coming low so it's a depend upon the various factors so let we see what are the factors are involving in that for that we need to go page number 43 it is 44 so here there are some six cases are given minimal condition on bracing lines so suppose in a gantry type of structure if you are designing means there we used to provide lot of bracing system if all the bracing systems are very 100 percent perfect then we can have this observation as zero <coughs> in case of redundancy in plan if you are providing many redundant member in order to break the uh, centerness of any of the main member means then we can observe this as zero regularity in plan if you are having means then it is zero regularity in elevation means it is zero control of materials is very good and you are maintaining very quality material means then the observation is zero control of construction quality is very good and the construction is uh, done very proper means we no need to worry about that simply we can consider zero and then the structure quality factor will come as one but any of the case if you are not following this means we need to add this 0 0.05 and 0 0.05 based upon the respective conditions of uh, not ensuring qualities we need to consider this penalty factor pq so, so suppose if the minimum conditions on bracing lines is not achieved not ensured then we have to add it this penalty factor to our uh, structure quality factor so then 0 0.05 to be considered likewise there are various uh, various category to be considered so here what time consider here is in the table so first one is all qualities not ensured so all the six if it is not ensured means our pq that is penalty factor on quality is 0 0.35 so only one quality not ensured that is in construction quality means it should be 0 0.1 so from the table which is provided in the right hand side i am uh, extract and i got 
calculated in order to find out the peak Q value. So thus if I am selecting if all the qualities are not ensured or not maintained then my structure quality factor will get increased. Accordingly my seismic load also get increased. So if suppose I am selecting only one quality not ensured that is construction quality means my seismic is going to decrease as 1.92 because my structure quality factor is decreased. So if suppose I am selecting 5 qualities not ensured. See here it is 2.34 is my seismic total weight. Now if it is 4 qualities not ensured means it is 2.25. So likewise if all means it is higher value. So in our case already we had declared here as a structure type is regular. So in the right hand side if you see that 3 and 4 item we are uh, ensuring here. So our category is we can say that quality assurances we are having 4 qualities not ensure. For our safety purpose we can consider this. So I am getting penalty factor for quality as 0 0.25 as per table 4.4. Next one is a structure quality factor which is a summation of this penalty factor nothing other than that. That formula is given just above here. Here you can see in the right hand side Q equal to 1 plus sigma PQ and the summation is start from 1 to 5 that is first quality assurance to fifth quality assurance. Actually there are totally 6 so that is 5 plus 1 is 6. You can see here there are 5 number of quality insurance we need to maintain. So that structure quality factor also I am getting from this uh, table. Next one is the total weight of uh, structures. So for that uh, we need to refer the class 4.2.3. Page number is uh, 44. Yeah, it is the same page number. So here you can see W is the weight, total weight of the structure. So that weight you can see here sigma W I. I is ranging from 1 to N. This N is nothing but the number of floors or number of storage. So WI to be calculated in such a way that WI equal to WGI plus beta WQI. WG is nothing but it is a permanent load or dead load or self weight. Whereas WQI is a variational load such as live load. It is a imposed load. So this imposed load and the beta, uh, beta is a how much percentage or how, what is a coefficient to be considered on live load or imposed load in order to add the total uh, weight of the structure. So for that uh, beta value we need to refer table 4.5 which is uh, just below here. So the English version you can see in the left hand side. So there are five cases and building type uh, residential use building offices and assimilated for that uh, beta value is 0 0.2 for building receive the public temporarily rooms of uh, exhibition of uh, sport places of uh, cult meeting rooms uh, with stand up places classrooms restaurant uh, dormitories meeting room with the uh, setting seats for that uh, 0 0.3 and 0 0.4 warehouses hangers 0 0.5 Archives, libraries, tanks and assimilated buildings the one. Other buildings no aimed above are 0 0.6. So this is what same are mentioned here. So using this uh, formula we need to calculate uh, the total weight of the structure. Right now I am not demonstrating with any of the physical model or any building model. So I don't know the value of uh, total weight of the structure. Hence, uh, I am assuming here for our uh, demonstration purposes uh, 10 kilo Newton. Then, then finally that uh, total seismic load we can calculate from class 
for that page number 39 to be referred so here you can see v is equal to that is total seismic loads equal to a into d into q divided by r into w w is a total weight of the structure which we have seen and a a is the acceleration coefficient here d is a dynamic amplification factor d here in a red color red color cell q is a quality structural quality factor which is 1.25 r is a global behavior coefficient of the structure green color cell w is a total weight so i am getting total seismic load as a 2.25 kN which is nearly equal to 23% or 22.5 percentage of total weight so with this uh, let me stop we will uh, see in another video thank you look description for more related videos thank you